Hey guys, thanks for watching, tuning in, coming back, whatever it is, and I appreciate it. I hope you're having an awesome day. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about color theory and the color wheel and sort of how I approach uh, the, I don't want to say colorization, but how I approach color in my photos. Um, if you watch any of my videos, you know I'm really big into color. I, I just absolutely adore like vibrant, bright colors. Um, but I've gotten into a mode of where I do certain things and, and, and there's a reason why, and I've never really talked about that uh, in detail. And there's certain tools, especially in Luminar, uh, that would really help me get to uh, where I wanna get with my colors. So what I'm talking about is the color wheel and complementary colors. So let me just jump into that. So here's a, um, a graphic of a color wheel, and essentially what this represents is the, the primary colors that, that we think of in photography, right? Red, green, and blue, or RGB. Um, and the way this is set up, so. Uh, complementary colors are across each other, directly across each other from, um, uh, you know, across the wheel from each other. So red is complemented by cyan, right? Blue is complemented by yellow, and green is complemented by magenta. Now, um, I bring this up because uh, uh, there's a color balance tool in Luminar that I use a lot, and it's exactly this, and it helps you really balance out your colors because complementary colors, they help each other look good. And so I find myself when I'm out shooting, looking for examples of where these colors both exist. And when you have them in a, a photograph, uh, they look good together and they make, make each other sort of appear brighter and they add a bit of um for a little bit of pop to, uh, to the other color. And I'm gonna show you some examples of that. So let me give you um, a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. So here's a sunset. Sunset's the perfect example of complementary colors because when you have a gradient like that where you have some blues as well as some oranges, it looks a whole lot better than if it was just all orange or all blue. It's, it's more, um, there's a, a higher contrast and I think they call it simultaneous contrast, but basically having that variation in color makes it more interesting and more beautiful to the human eye. And so when I'm out looking for uh, or taking photos, especially if like sunset, obviously we're all drawn to sunset, you know, this could be sunrise instead, but that time of day when the light is soft and the colors may or may not end up being great, but when they end up being great like uh, this scene, um, I, I'm especially happy when I do have some pockets of blue because you have the primary color, which is that orange, um, but then you have sort of an accent color blue and they make each other pop a little bit and they stand out. Uh, here's a photo from London. The primary color is blue, but these accents of this yellow-orange of all these lights just make the colors stand out better. They really complement each other. If you look here, like the yellow against the blue, it just stands out and really draws your attention. I gotta look at my notes, make sure I'm covering all this. Um, yeah, I've, I've covered all the things I wanna talk about. Here's a sunrise, right? Lots of blue in the sky, but there's quite a bit of orange, uh, kind of pink as well. And so when I'm editing, I wanna accent the difference and bring up those colors so that I have some of both in my photo. Here's another sunset, and this is primarily a blue hour shot, but in editing it, I wanted to bring up some of the oranges and pinks in the, uh, in the sky and in the clouds that were happening from the sunset that was already behind the hills, way out of frame to the right. The nice thing about this is it complements the warm tones that I'm getting out of the light trails of the passing cars. And so that's the other thing about these complementary colors. One is warm and one is cool, and that's generally how it works. So if you go back to this, right, you've got kind of a, a cooler color and a warmer color, cooler and warmer, cooler and warmer. And so they, they bounce off of each other and they provide that simultaneous contrast that I talked about. Um, I even shoot shots like this sometimes when I'm traveling. This is just a random street scene. Um, and I intentionally blurred everything simply because I like twinkly lights. But it didn't really look like this. It was a bit more blue and muted. And so what I wanted to do in editing is bring up some of that contrast. So I brought in some of the pinks and oranges to sort of counterbalance that uh, blue that was kind of the dominant color. So let me show you what this looks like in Luminar when I'm editing photos. Um, some of these photos you've seen before, I'm not recreating, uh, this isn't an editing session as much as just um, how I think about color theory and apply it in my photos. So the first thing here was tone to sort of manage the light a little bit. And then I go into color balance. And so color balance, boom, you can see it made a huge difference. Now remember, let me go back to the color wheel. Let me get that guy up. Um, 
red to cyan, green to magenta, and blue to yellow, right? What do you have over here? Red, cyan, green, magenta, and blue, yellow. The great thing about color balance is it is that color wheel, and so you can take your colors and create um, higher intensities of those, and it's divided between shadows, midtones, and highlights. So in this one, what I wanted to do, let me turn it off again. It was very blue, it was a sunset, and we had, you know, we, I was there by myself. Um, I had some nice orange, yellow kind of stuff, but a lot of blue as well. And so with color balance, I was able to bring back a lot of those warmer tones. And so I did that in the highlights where I dragged uh, this slider more to the red and that slider more to the yellow. In the midtones, I did a little bit of the same. And the shadows, I didn't touch at all, but I might come in and say, well, maybe I want to add a little bit of blue to the shadows just to, you know, kind of not overdo it. So something like that. And that's again where I think about color theory. I came in with color temp and then actually, if you watch any of my videos, you'll, you'll know that I talk about temperature and tint all the time. And basically what I do almost on every photo is I take the temperature to the left to make it kind of cooler and I take the tint to right, to the right, which is a little bit more of the magenta. And that's playing that cool and warm tone off of each other. And that is sort of creating that contrast between those sort of complementary colors. And so between color temp and color balance, you can make a big difference in a photo, you know, really quickly. So there's the before and after. Let me show you that in a couple of other photos. So let me show you the before, right? This was a sunset and you can see that um, I've edit, edited it to create more of that complementary, complementary color, uh, you know, make them more visible. Uh, it was actually a gorgeous sunset, but most of the light and color in the sky was out of frame to the right. You know, I did have some light bouncing off those clouds, but when I edited this, um, I wanted to bring that back up again. And so, you know, there's tone to manage some of those colors, but then it was, I mean, some of the light and the, and the contrast. But then it was color temp, cross-processing, saturation, split color warmth, HSL. Let me just turn these off, in fact. And you can see the difference that, in fact, I'll leave saturation. That one's not as much. Um, so if I didn't have those particular sliders, uh, color temp, cross-processing, uh, split color warmth and HSL, it would be very blue, right? Um, and while it's a nice photo, I think it looks a whole lot better when I add some color punch. And so I came in and intentionally started adding these sort of things in order to create more of that warmth in the photo because again, that warmth is playing off of that cool tones of the blue. And so here my primary or background color, if you will, is the blue and I've got orange, you know, yellow as accent. It also, to me, plays well that more of the blue is in the center of the frame, and I've got orange at the top and then orange in the sand kind of in the bottom. It sort of creates sort of striations in the photo, which, which I kind of like. So one more time, there's the before and the after. And let me show you one more. Here's a shot. It started like this, and this was just a single exposure. Uh, it was a set of brackets, but this, this one went fairly long, so you can see all the people ghosting out. But what I did here is, you know, I look for these scenes. So it's not just landscapes and, and sunsets or whatever. It's also cityscapes where if you have blue hour, like I did here in London, the sky is blue. But if you can have city lights, which are generally kind of an orange yellow, it's a nice color complement to the blue that you're getting. So what I did here is a little bit of stuff in develop and AI, but then it was a brilliance and warmth and golden hour and color balance that really made a big difference. Let me turn those off as you can see. It's a lot bluer photo, right? So there's the before and the after. All I did is really just change the light. But adding color balance and golden hour and brilliance and warmth to that has really warmed up the accent colors of the orange and they complement the blue. If you notice, uh, and by the way, I added some H, no I didn't, I thought I had HSL in this one. Um, I also did my temperature and tint thing here where I take temperature left and tint to the right. But in the before and after comparison, let me show you. You know, you've got some warmth in the photo, right? You've got orangey yellow here on the Tower of London. You've got some coming off this street light. It falls on the uh, on the cobblestones here, but you can't really tell in this single exposure. And then of course, the lights on the bridge and the city are kind of warm, but I've brought them up. And what I haven't done here is added a lot of blue to the photo. I did change the tint, uh, excuse me, the temperature overall, but I haven't added a lot of blue. But if you look at the blue, it's really popping and a lot of that is because now I've got a lot more prominence in that warm color and so they're sort of playing off of each other. 
Uh, in this photo, I also like that the oranges are all mostly over here and the blues are mostly over there, right? So blues are kind of in the sky, a little bit of the water, and then the oranges are kind of over here on the left side of my frame, uh, more in the cobblestones. And I just think that's a nice color complement. So there's before and after. And so that's how I think about color. That's how I'm sort of strategic about um, accentuating colors and trying to make my photos pleasing to the human eye because complementary colors are pleasing to the human eye. I mean, this is something that painters will talk about. Even if you're painting your house or your room, you know, if you have a decorator or something, this is not my thing, to be clear. Um, but, you know, I'm sure that they would talk about that and they'd break out a color wheel and say, what color palettes do you generally like? That sort of thing. I think in similar terms for my photos. I like the the blues and the oranges or, you know, the cool tones and the warm tones sort of playing off each other. And so I look for photo opportunities that will help me uh, capture that and knowing that I can accentuate it some in post to get it looking the way that I remember it looking. Um, I obviously edit for a little bit of drama and I edit for a little bit of impact, but, um, you know, it didn't really look like that because your eye sees a whole lot more than that and your eye will pick up the warm tones and the cool tones better than your camera will. Uh, to me, that's more representative of what it felt like and I edit in that way. And another reason I like color because it impacts how you feel. You'll see some colors. You know, warm tones will get you kind of excited. Cool tones are kind of calm. And I like to balance those to create some excitement, yet not hyper, right? If it's all orange, you're kind of like, wow. And if it's all blue, you're like, hey, man, it's kind of cool, right? So I like to try to find opportunities where I can blend both of those and, and use the sort of color theory, if you will, to my, to my benefit in my editing. So that's really it. Not really a tutorial about Luminar. Um, you can do this in Lightroom or Photoshop or Topaz or Nick, uh, you know, other products as well. It's more about how I approach color and color theory. And I happen to use Luminar primarily. And so I wanted to show you that. Uh, and that's it, my friends. I hope it's helpful. If you like this kind of video, let me know. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know what kind of thoughts you have about, uh, you know, any feedback on this type of video. It's more about photography in general, less about a specific app, but um, it's fun for me to talk about and it's interesting to me. And I'm not an expert in color science or color theory. I read about it a little bit and I have read about it, but to be honest, I just go with kind of what's pleasing to my eye and it happens to fit into color theory. I'm sure that's no accident. That's how we're wired. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Come back soon. I'll have more and I'll see you then. Adios.